is hosting the Total Energies BWF Thomas and Uber Cups. Here on court two, it is the Uber Cup action between Chinese Taipei and Tahiti. We've just witnessed the women's singles where Pai Po beat Maeva Gaia in straight games. And coming up now is the second women's singles, Wong Yu Ting taking on Melissa Miyu. There is uh, again a big difference in match experience here, but Tahiti relishing the opportunity. The players now getting ready to walk out on court. First up, it will be Hung Yi Ting of Chinese Taipei. There she is, making the walk. And uh, she will be excited to get going in this tournament. She hasn't uh, really played women's singles for some time now, so she'll be excited to be back on court playing her best badminton. And then we will, of course, uh, see Tahiti's Melissa Miyu come on shortly. There she is. She's 18. Most of these Tahitians are below 20 years old in this team, so really young, really excited, and very, very happy to be here in Denmark for the Uber Cup. Joining me in commentary is Grania Somerville, who also represents Australia in the Oceania region, and she has played Team Tahiti before in the Oceania Championships. So she knows a little bit about what it's like for, say, Chinese Taipei to take on these girls and, you know, to uh, try and get the best of this situation. Yeah, so we've played against Tahiti a few times myself in, you know, the Uber Cup preliminary um, trials as well as Oceanic Championships. So, yeah, it's nice to see the girls here again and embracing this experience. Well, this is the first meeting between Hong Yi Ting and Melissa Miyu, as we just saw the to coin toss there. And uh, it was Hong Yi Ting who won the toss and chose to receive. So Melissa Miyu will serve. Before that, though, they'll have a two minute warm up on court. Just uh, getting ready. There you go, Hong Yi Ting, 24 years of age, 173 centimeters tall, ranked 142 in the world. Her highest ranking was 89. Born in Taipei, Chinese Taipei. She hasn't played the singles uh, since 2019, so she's really sort of coming into this with a little bit of, or a little bit lacking in match experience. And uh, on the tour at least. Melissa Miyu, she's just 17 years old. She hasn't turned 18 yet. And 155 centimeters tall. That ranked 1,033. Born in Pakte, Tahiti. Her highest ranking was 454 in the world. And uh, she also trains in France. Um, and has moved to France because of university. Yes. Just recently, I believe. The umpire is Daniel Wolf from Austria, and the service judge will be Hedem Larsen of Denmark. They will be officiating this match, the second of the women's singles. And the reason why all three women's singles will be played first is because uh, all three of the Tahitian women's singles players will then be involved in the women's doubles matches that's coming up on court two. A lot of these uh, Tahitians, as you mentioned earlier, are based in France, they're training in France, which is certainly, again, a good move for them to gain more experience playing in this part of the world and also helps them improve their training regime because they have more access. Yeah, it's definitely a bit better opportunity for the badminton career within Europe. There's a lot of tournaments going on, a lot of you know different levels of tournaments as well. So, you know, future series to super series, they have everything here. So it's a really good opportunity for them to get a bit more access to a higher level of badminton than Tahiti has to offer. Well, this will be you. It's going to serve. She's going to take the shuttle. And she will get this match going for Tahiti, hoping. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Chinese Taipei, represented by Hong Yi Ting. And on the left, Tahiti, represented by Wei Su Mi Yi. Tahiti to serve. Love all. Play. 
Melissa Vee, you're hoping to get as much out of this match as well from playing a higher ranked opponent. So You've obviously spoken to the coach, and for him, it must be about getting the team A as together as possible because they're coming from different parts of the world, so getting them gelled up, and then also about, you know, being at the Uber Cup. Yeah, so with them spread throughout France and Tahiti, it's, yeah, a, dif a different vibe, I guess, for the team, for them just coming together for these events. But having this opportunity is real bonding experience to, you know, play their first Uber Cup and Suderman Cup the, the previous week before. So they just need to all encourage each other, which I'm sure they're doing, and just give their best in every match. Well worked point by only 18 now. Yep, gliding the back end. There you go, Chloe. Very happy to be there. It's an interesting. It's an interesting circumstance for eating as well, having not played for such a, a while. I wonder what that she must be feeling being back on court. Yeah, she's also missed out on a lot of you know tournaments with the the pandemic and everything. So. I'm sure she's also happy to be here and get back into a big arena and high level of competition. What did what what was going through your mind when you played your first match after some time of being out of action, just getting just training back home and then getting to play your first match after some time? What what would go through your mind? It was actually really challenging. So after you know 2020, kind of not having any tournaments really myself, then we played the Thailand Open and the Asian, the Asian tour within the start of 2021. And it was really hard to kind of switch on to that super high intensity. You know, you kind of just got into that rhythm of training each day and just to step up the intensity in tournament was kind of a foreign, foreign concept because it had been so long. So it definitely took some adjustment and yeah, having that awareness to really know the extra love we had to bring in that situation. Seven. So this is would be a really good opportunity then for Tahiti to try and capitalize on the situation where, you know, the opponent herself is a bit nervous about being back on tour, being back on court. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes with Chinese Taipei, they can have this very relaxed style and lose their focus a little bit. And this is a situation where Tahiti could take advantage of that. 9-4 now for Mami Tun. And that was a confidence smash coming from the Chinese type of player to make it 10-4. And with that, the net error means that it's Chinese type in the lead, 11-4 at the mid-game break in this first game. Melissa Mi Yu did well to try and get some points off uh, the Chinese Taipei team. And in four minutes, it is still Chinese Taipei who are in the lead. Two, 20 seconds. Court two, 20 seconds. And players back four. on court to resume game one. 11 4. Chinese Taipei leading at the moment. Tahitian girls just lack a little bit of power. They, their clears are not getting fully to the backcourt, and that's just giving the Chinese Taipei girls that chance to 
intersect and have a lot of options for like a short, a short clear shot. I'd imagine it'd be hard for the coach to try and also you know, boost them, knowing that it, it's a really difficult ask out of these players to go and you know, clear their mind and just play their game. They know how big the occasion is. Yeah, when the, the level is different between opponents, it's hard as a coach, I guess, to, to get the most out of your player and it, it more just comes down to a confidence thing and trying to get them to have those few key points that they're able to to play well and really just trying to minimize the errors just trying to stay in the rallies and you know get as many as ma many minutes on court as they can to really experience it all Again, she tried really well to get that cross court drop shot on. Just missed it by a little bit. Melissa Miu. And uh, that backhand. Proving a bit too easy to return. 19 4. Hong Yu Ting now leading Chinese Taipei. A net error, a costly net error from Melissa Miu means it's game point for Chinese Taipei, 24, 16 game points here for Chinese Taipei. That is nicely placed. So it's game, Chinese Taipei lead 21-4 in the first game. Hong Yutin coming through for her team in just seven minutes. And uh, it proved to be a simple enough first game for Chinese Taipei, even though she started a little bit nervy maybe. But that shot there, right on the line, means it is game for Chinese Taipei. Tahiti, of course, have played in the team championships before this year. It was in 2017 when the Sudaman Cup was uh, in Gold Coast, but they were in the lower groups. They weren't in the elite group as such, but they did get an experience of being a part of a, you know, an elite team championship or a big team championship when it was in the Gold Coast, which I'm sure was an amazing experience. Yeah, I think that tournament was a lot of players' favourites. It was, you know, right on the beach, the waterfront. Players would go do some beach training in the morning and then the court training in the afternoon. So I think all the players really loved that. And yeah, it was great for Tahiti to be involved as well. And probably one of their first really big um, teams tournaments, you know, with all the best players in the world there. A lot of these players are very excited to be just in, in these tournaments so that they can meet their heroes. I know uh, some of them are looking forward to meeting Kento Momota, and uh, we had also someone talk about meeting um, the Korean women, women's doubles. Yeah. Kim and Kong, they're a popular pair. Yeah. So, you know, coming from such a small, isolated country in the middle of the ocean, it's it's really such an opportunity to be around all these players that you, you they hear about and they watch that they don't have much access to generally. Victor Axelson, another name that came up a lot when we asked him about the heroes and meeting them. Nice try there, just going wide. Two, look. Three. Be really good for Melissa to try and not make these errors off the return. Just try and get into the rally straight away and get a few more shots in.
There you go. It's like she heard you. <laughs> An unfortunate error there, but Sorry. she definitely Sorry. tried to keep the shuttle in play. For Hung Yi Ting as well, this is a good way to ease back into the international circuit. Uh, she played Six. Egypt in her first match and now Tahiti. Uh, biggest challenge coming up against Korea in the next uh, group match. So to have these two fairly comfortable matches would be a good way to regain her confidence. Seven. Yeah, and she doesn't seem like she's mucking around. She's being very efficient on court today, going in and getting the job done. It just seems so effortless, this stroke play for Chinese Taipei. She's doing well at pushing Melissa back into the court and then Melissa doesn't have much choice but to play it back to the front court where Kung Yi Ting's just waiting. It's a nine love lead now in this second game. Chinese Taipei already having won that first game 21-4, so it's smooth sailing at the moment. For Chinese Taipei. Again, lovely shot there from Hung Yi Ting. Oh, so China. Probably one of her own, just missing it there. And that means it's 11 love for Chinese Taipei at the mid game interval in the second game. It took four minutes. She would try now to tr get some points on the board. That should be the first aim here for Tahiti. And uh, avoid that love score line. But uh, it's hard to imagine what these teenagers are feeling on court. In, on, you know, it's the biggest of stages with the hardest of asks, if I could say that. And uh, Melissa Mews and her compatriots putting on a brave, brave fight here. So the back on court. And Melissa will only have one match between this and then her women's doubles coming up, so she will have another chance to get on court with not too much time to recover. And that's one of the differences that you see with some of these countries from smaller teams. They, they're very limited in the number of players that they bring, so the they're players do get quite worn out playing one, singles and then one. doubles, you know, sometimes back-to-back -back days, whereas bigger teams like Chinese Taipei that have that buffer of having, you know, purely singles girls and then purely doubles girls, so they just can focus on that one match and then even maybe we'll have a rest day and another girl will step in, so... There's that difference in, you know, the, the recovery and the fatigue that's associated with having the, the resources of a bigger team at their disposal. Well, she's managed to get on board. Over. Melissa Mew. 13. Two. That was a nice drop shot from Hung Yi Ting. 14, Just delicately placing it in the front of the court. And for Hung Yi Ting, she really just wants to try and be practicing those, those good executing shots, trying to find the lines. If she is to play Korea tomorrow, it's going to be you know, a, 15, a very challenging match for two. her. So to kind of get that confidence in knowing she can hit those shots when she, when she needs to will just help her prepare for that mentally and, you know, boost her confidence. Serve is over. Going for that roll there. Just rolling back to her own side. Serve is over. It was surprising she went. For the same side of the court that the player was standing there instead of going cross court 
Hang Yi Ting in that point, but it went her way eventually. She was going for the right shot there, across the court, trying to find the line. It was called out, but uh, Melissa Miu has challenged that. And unfortunately, that is challenge out. Challenge unsuccessful, one challenge remaining. So, it is 18-3 now for Hang Yuting. We're three points away from Chinese Taipei, taking a 2-0 lead. This is a much better rally from Melissa here. She was using the full court. Unfortunately, Hang Yuting, again, getting the opportunity to step in. But well worked by Melissa. And that's out. Serve is over. 4 19. She hit that a bit too hard, maybe. Serve is over. So, it is match point for Hong Yi Ting now. 24 in the second game. And on the first time of asking, Hong Yi Ting converts 21-4, 21-4, the final score. And I think she'll be really happy with that. She kept her focus throughout and executed some beautiful shots that She'll need to replicate again if she's playing against Korea in the future group stage match. Took 15 minutes to wrap that victory up for Chinese Taipei, who now are 2 0 up in uh, this tie, Group C tie in the Uber Cup. Uh, just in the reminder in their group, you've got Korea, Chinese Taipei, Egypt, and Tahiti. So Chinese Taipei will be one of the favorites to go through. That's match point here again. And uh, finding the net, Melissa Miyu. Her forehand finding the net. And so that wrapped it up for Hung Yi Ting. And the players walk off on court. So coming up, it will be the third of the women's singles. Yu Chien Hui taking on Herotia Kure of Tahiti.
we're coming to you live from the Ceres Arena in Aarhus, Denmark. This is the indoor arena, part of the Aarhus Sports Park, and was opened in 2001. It roughly has a seating capacity of 5,000. And it is hosting the Total Energies BWF tournament.